Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in today's episode, we're going to show how to change the impeller on a Volvo Penta 5.7 liter V8. Now this is, happens to be in our 2004 Chaparral. Um, the process is pretty similar regardless of the boat you have. There's going to be some nuanced differences, but let me show you how to go about replacing this. Uh, and I'm going to try to go a little quick because I'm not sure. I've been sitting out here this morning since before it got light. It was really pretty. Um, just listening to a podcast and relaxing with a cup of coffee out on the dock. And I kept thinking I was hearing thunder in the distance, but I could see the stars and I could see the moon. And now as the sun's coming up, I'm starting to see maybe there's some weather off in the distance. So let's take a look here. Here's the boat. I got to uncover it and get to working on it. But I'll show you what I meant here about this uh, this weather. Look, you can see it looks like maybe something's getting ready to come through. But, you know, in typical fashion, it's certainly not everywhere. <laughs> so who knows? We'll figure it out. Let's get over here to the boat. We'll get it uncovered and I'll show you what it looks like to start and then we'll dig in and actually do the work. So there's a couple things you're gonna need before you get started with this job. Uh, obviously a few tools. Most impeller covers just hold on with a flat blade screwdriver or you can use a small socket depending on the actual front of it. We'll take a deep closer look at ours here in a minute and show you exactly what we need for that one. The other thing that's pretty handy is just some kind of a little vessel to catch any fluid that's gonna come out so it doesn't get down into um, you know, the engine compartment of the bilge. This is kind of an interesting design. I'll show you in a minute. Um, on the 5.7 liter Volvo Penta, um, this is in a 2004 Chaparral uh, 27 foot semester in that particular boat the actual water pump isn't just permanently mounted and gear driven like it is on some of our inboard diesels instead it is actually um, attached to the front of the the main crank it's kind of interesting it can move around as the crank moves around um, so it's kind of a unique design i'll show you what that looks like here in a minute we'll get ready to open up the uh, engine compartment and climb on in All right, let's start with the specific model. So this is a Volvo Penta 5.7 GI-E. All right, so as we look at the front side of the motor, you can kind of see right down here, this is where my impeller is located. So this is actually the raw water pump that mounts right on the front side of this crank. We've got my water inlet from within the lower unit drive, and then the uh, the pump that goes up into the actual uh, heat exchanger. So Let's uh, show you how to go about taking this little booger apart. So we're gonna try a little experiment here. I'm gonna attempt to cheat a little bit. So the impeller sits right inside of this little raw water pump. You can see it's crank mounted. The screws are pretty simple. There's one, two, three, and then there's one right between these. That one's gonna be the challenge. Normally to do this, you have to remove this bracket. There's a couple of screws right up in here, not very easy to get to. And then ultimately you remove these hoses and you pull this thing right off of there, turn it on its side, and replace the impeller in there. It's a real pain in the neck to get to this, a little bit of boat uh, yoga, if you will, to try to get in a position where you can see that. I'm thinking, if I can get to this screw on the back side here, I may be able to take this off, rotate this around, slide it right up this bar without disconnecting the hoses and turn it, enough to be able to get the impeller out. So I wanna give that a try and see what happens, we'll see. Uh, the, the challenge here is we're going to have two to three quarts or so of water that's going to come out of here. So we need to be cautious of that. That's what the bucket's for. Alright, so this is a 9 16 I'm going to see if we can get this little booger off of here. broken loose.
Like with most things on a boat, you don't want to drop a screw or a bolt. Bracket off of here, that side. Get the bracket off, we've got an easier way of getting to these. There's one between those two ports, right there, and then there's three right here on the outside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these, loosen them up. Remember, put your drip bucket underneath there. in the water but I am above the water line so I should be just fine this will eventually stop as soon as the rest of the engine water drains out there we go so that is the majority of it right there and it's gonna be real important I want to make sure I keep this hole on the top the same way it was before This impeller doesn't look horrible, but let me pull it out of there. So here's the impeller we've removed, and you can see it's actually in pretty good shape. It's normal to have this little bit of misshapenness to it. If you think about what's happening is it's sitting inside of that housing like this, and on one side it has to smoosh those splines as it pushes that water well, I guess it pushes it this way, but it pushes that water around from the intake to the output. Now, I'm going to go ahead and buy a new one of these. Well, as you might have seen, as I was wrapping up, um, pulling that part off, it started raining a little bit more and more. And I thought, well, let me just get this off. And then while it's raining, I can run out to the store and get the part or something. Uh, just as I started covering up the boat, <laughs> the skies just opened up and it poured. I was literally drenched. Um, but as you saw, the impeller actually didn't look all that bad. And I, I thought, you know, I've had this beeping when I was running the other night in idle, just tooling up and down the canals. We were looking at Christmas lights. Uh, the, uh, it, it had this sort of beep every two seconds. And I think it might have been a high temperature warning. I'm not actually sure because the temperature looked fine. Uh, and that's what made me think I want to check the impeller out. Unfortunately, the Volvo Penta dealership just over the bridge here uh, is closed today. And if I'm going to go to a Marine store and get one, there's a couple to choose from. But I'm actually going to go to West Marine because this weekend they're doing triple points. Uh, so if I'm going to spend money at West Marine, I just soon get triple points for it, which which helps. You know, I don't know, I can't remember. Every 250 bucks you spend, you get 25 bucks or something back. So it uh, it's something, especially if you have a boat. There's no there's no avoiding it. You spend money at West Marine. Period. <laughs> I went ahead and picked this up at West Marine. This is the replacement for the Volvo Penta impeller that I need. And the uh, clouds have cleared, so I'm gonna go down back to the boat, uncover it, and we'll go ahead and put this thing back in. You can see here the inside of this looks really good. It's clean. Uh, there's no grease, no oil, no issues with bearings or seals or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the new impeller right back in there. And if you recall from watching the video before, the splines here all bend this direction. So it bend clockwise when I'm holding in this orientation. That's how I know exactly where I need to put this thing back in. So one of the things you'll notice is there is an O-ring right here. You see that? I'm peeling that O-ring up. And we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Just peel this old one off very gently. We don't wanna leave any residue in there. It's actually in really good shape. I don't think it's all that old. So the nice thing about buying an aftermarket um, impeller is this same impeller fits a bunch of different sort of size uh, water pumps. And in our case, we need the O-ring. Other styles would use these gaskets. So we're going to put those aside and we're going to replace this O-ring. And if you'll recall, I just peeled it off of this little edge here. It's a nice flat edge. It's hard to hold it up against that. It just happened to be stuck there. The easiest thing to do is to put this right here 
on the edge of this bearing and then we'll just sort of gently push it in place and that is going to help any water from getting into that particular bearing and if you remember i mentioned before this rotates and it's important that we want to keep that hole at the top if you notice there's also well in this case there's weep holes on three of those sides oh, interesting but that's the way it was oriented i'm going to keep it oriented the same way now the way this goes on here is basically you can see the splines on the shaft those are just going to line up you can see it slides in really easy so when we have it in this housing if it's not going in easy we just need to rotate back and forth until we get those to line right up now one of the things you'll hear a lot of people say is that the, the best thing to do is put some petroleum jelly on this it is interesting it's johnson pump replacement they specifically say do not use any petroleum based products so what i am going to do is use the lubricant they include in it which is actually a glycerin based uh, lubricant which is kind of interesting um, just going to mix it up a little bit tear this little edge off and then i am going to use just a little tiny bit along this lip seal here not a lot just a little tiny bit and the reason i want to do that is just to make sure we get a good seat along that whole thing let's dry fit this thing before i go ahead and put it in there the reason you put some lubricant on here is because when the engine starts up there's no water in this this thing's gonna be running dry you don't want that to be a problem now i mentioned before these splines all need to bend clockwise they're gonna have to go that direction specifically the spot we need to do that is here where it's a little bit flatter so in order to get them to bend that direction i'm going to rotate it as i put it in like this and that's the way i'm going to snap this in there which as we go around this you'll see will allow it those splines to all be am I in there the right way yeah that will bend them the right way if i go that direction see all right so that's going to be my approach and now i'll go ahead and put the lubricant on here and it's really just a matter of adding some into the splines here not a whole lot just a little bit and then i'm going to add a little bit onto the shaft as well i will say the one downside of using the lubricant is makes it that much harder to push this sucker in one of the tricks a lot of people will use is put a tie wrap around this thing to kind of hold these splines in the direction you want them to go while you push it in there but you can see now how all the splines go in that direction which is exactly what we want so they will be taking the water from the inlet here moving it around the pump and discharging it out that side it's now just a matter of lining this up and like i mentioned before this should not be hard to get on there so we just line it up nice and straight wiggle it on there very gently There we go. I've got that pretty close to lined up. Let's get this first screw going. We're going to make sure we don't cross thread them because we're trying to get that to just twist up a little tiny bit. All right. That seemed to go nicely. Now do the next one. And you should not have to force these screws. If you notice, they came out easy. Once we broke the seal loose, they came out real easy. And they should go back in just as easy. Now I'm going to put that difficult to reach one in last. Now just like uh, lug nuts on a car or anything else, I always crisscross when I'm tightening something like this, just to make sure it has a good even seal. All right, the next step here is to install that bracket. Do a quick visual inspection. Just rotating around. Looks good. Handle any vibration. And we look like we're good. All right, we've got it all buttoned up right here and the brackets back on. Um, I went ahead and just did kind of a visual inspection of the whole engine. I took the plastic cover off the top and I noticed that this little bracket here that helps hold the plastic housing over the top it was a little bit loose so i went ahead and tightened that up which is good because frankly it holds that spark arrestor down on the top of the carburetor so i don't know good good plan to just make sure that's good and tight 
One of the nice things about these Volvo Penta motors is there's this hose right there that I have the garden hose connected to. It just tees into the water inlet line, um, and it's really designed for if you have your trailer and you want to run your boat, you can just hook a hose up to it and sort of force water through the engine so you don't cause any damage. Um, the nice thing for me is because, because I drained that water out of this pump housing, um, I don't want to run the impeller dry, and I also don't know if it's self-priming. I think it is, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on this garden hose, let the water flow through there real well, then I'll cap it, and then I'll start up the engine and just verify I have water flowing, which is a little bit challenging to do because I am uh, I'm sitting in the water while I'm doing this. All right, as we start it up, there's a couple things we're going to want to look at, and one of them is going to be our oil pressure here. So let's just make sure that comes up okay. Got my two warnings. Oil pressure comes right up. That's good. We can see our temperature sitting at 120 there. That's cool right now. What I'm going to do is... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let this warm up uh, and let it get to about temperature with that hose on, and then I'll turn the hose off and make sure it doesn't get hotter. That'll tell me if we're in good shape there. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, which was a how-to video of how to replace an impeller on a Volvo Penta 5.7 liter GI-E. From Gil, Deb, and the Grand Squids aboard the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, or today, aboard the Chaparral, we wish you safe sailing and safe boating. I know.